I've discovered that the freshman class get their orientation away from the mainland. Today, we find them on South Island. This is their introduction to a program that makes them familiar and informed about several areas of forestry and wildlife. <laughs> I guess even creatures like these. While they need to feel the heat from pine forest and chemical fire burns, Department Chair Brian Clark wants them to know what happens when they are cut down. There's a small degree of difference between a controlled fire and a wildfire. Uh, and so students will participate in labs like that. Uh, they get to taste the smoke, feel the heat, uh, and gives them an idea of, of many of the things that they'll be involved with. Uh, <clears throat> we will uh, go to uh, sawmills and paper mills uh, and measure product on those mills and follow that product through the process of being made into lumber or plywood or paper, uh, things like that. Uh, so they'll understand the manufacturing process, uh, how that crooked tree in the woods can still be used properly, uh, how to maximize that dollar investment to the landowner. Two full-time foresters and a biologist, the program employs adjunct instructors in order to prepare these graduates for real-world certification. The students will uh, handle herbicides and pesticides, uh, uh, learn mixing, safety. Uh, they will have the opportunity to qualify for their uh, South Carolina commercial pesticide license as part of their degree program. Uh, we try to you know, use things like that to uh, prepare the student not only for their degree, but also all the certifications they need on the job. Professor Jim Westerhold is a biologist who is no stranger to the low country. Well, this is a long-term interest, wildlife management. I came from South Carolina Department of Natural Resources before, where I managed properties in this area, the Georgetown area, and one other time with the Department of Natural Resources in the lower part of the state. And in between there, I managed some private plantations uh, for forestry and, and wildlife management purposes. In, in the wildlife side, we the most the famous classes are the, the techniques classes where we do skeet shoot uh, skeet shooting so they actually get to handle a gun and my main responsibility uh, to enter this into the college program is just to make sure they're comfortable with guns and they know how to handle them safely they don't have to hunt they don't have to ever handle a gun outside this program but for the most part they're going to be around guns and I want to make sure that they're comfortable with them and safe with them uh, but that's a popular lab. Another popular lab is uh, anything to do with hands-on wildlife. For example, uh, capturing waterfowl and putting Fish and Wildlife Service bands on them and releasing them. That's a, that's a popular lab. Capturing waterfowl and putting bands on them is a way for students to get good biological information necessary for writing the required wildlife plans. And new this spring is a course all about natural history in which they'll have to identify skulls and determine their number of offspring. While the college doesn't own a forest, there is no shortage of landowners willing to give students access to their land. One popular one would be um, Ted Turner. Um, has a plantation here that we use for labs and he also has conservation easement on his property. But it doesn't take, uh, it doesn't always have to be Ted Turner's. There are other local businessmen, lawyers, doctors, uh, other, others that have grown up um, loving a certain piece of property and they will hire individuals trained for forestry and wildlife management purposes. We would expect Lobley Pine or any of our southern pines to do what? Move north. But likewise, down the Everglades, we would expect the southern region of those pines while the northern region moves north, we would expect the southern region also to move north simply because the tropical heat down in southern Florida is getting warmer and the dynamics are changing there also. So it's not like just one end moves. Now we'd expect uh, our boreal forest, our northern forest, spruce and fir, to retreat. But likewise, way up in northern Canada where the tree line stops and it goes into permafrost, as that stuff defrosts, we would expect to see spruce and fir move north also. So a whole lot of dynamics can happen as far as rain. <coughs> of course, this is a very, relatively speaking, this is a slow process here. After completing required classes like these and 400 hours of cooperative work experience, they'll have a foot in the door and a big step toward future employment. And because this program has been established for so many years, the job placement rate is nearly 100%. For Techno, I'm Jeff Bracey.